Hello everyone, Nebkex here. Welcome back to Neb Raids. The weekend is over, so I'm ready to dive back into making some more raid content. And I actually saw a lot of content creators, a lot of folks in the community have been busy working on the Sand Devils Necropolis since then. Well, in today's video, I want to show you three of the teams uh, that I have built based off of uh, what other people have shown uh, that I've really liked and that I think have a ton, a ton, a ton of potential. And obviously we're going to be giving credit and shout outs as we go for where I initially saw these teams. So the first team I want to show you, and by the way, if you're wondering how we have all these stages unlocked, there was a bug with Nogdar where he could basically one shot the boss it's been fixed you can't do it anymore so that's how i did unlock all the stages um we're going into stage 24 now this team was actually created i believe by tyraku it's the first place i saw it i'm pretty sure he is the brain behind this team very very cool team we're gonna dive in uh what i like about this i actually have very different builds from tyraku here and what i like about this team it works on stage 24 uh, it actually, it doesn't work on every single stage. It's probably going to work from, I don't know, probably about maybe stage 17, maybe stage 18 or 19. It's going to work all the way up. It's going to be really bad on the force affinity stages, but you'll get through with some randomness eventually. Uh, and then it, it sort of caps out at 24. The problem with stage 25 is we are relying on Muckstalker to sleep, who's a rare, right? So he comes in with sleep for two turns on a two turn CD. So we need him to be landing these sleeps. So that's why it's really bad for Force Affinity. You might be able to make it work against Force Affinity with a different sleep champion. Like maybe you can make this work with Hellhound. I think it's possible perhaps, uh, but I haven't actually tried it. So that's definitely something to look out for. Or if they add any two turn, two, uh, two turn cooldown, two turn duration sleep champions in the future, watch out for them. They're amazing for this boss. Um, and let's just jump in. And you'll see how it goes. So some of the champions in this team are irreplaceable. And uh, some of them you can replace. Uh, what is really interesting about this team. It does work full auto as well, guys. So we're going to go in turn one. And we're going to get clapped by the big hit from the boss. We're going to survive with a revive on death. In this case, from Mother Cybell. She is actually the most replaceable person on this team. Because that's all she needs to do. And we're never going to see this move again. And there goes on the burn from Geomancer. Okay, and that's basically how it works. Geomancer's going to burn. Now watch this. The boss should go into his A2, right? Surely. But no, he goes into his A1. More so than that, Geomancer didn't die. So what is going on here? What the heck is happening? Well, let me tell you what's happening, guys. Uh, we are basically exploiting a multitude of bugs with this boss, right? I said this when the boss came out. It was something that initially was very off-putting to me in terms of building teams for this boss was the amount of bugs. Now that we've got more of an idea for how the boss works and where the bugs are, it, you know, you can definitely build teams. Um, but this, this team specifically is about exploiting those bugs. So there is certainly a possibility that this will stop working um, and that this could get fixed. Multiple content creators reported on these bugs and said that they should be fixed and this boss should be bug free before it goes live onto the game. Plarium didn't fix it. They pushed it live in this state. So in my opinion, exploit these bugs while you can, if you can. Uh, but yeah, look, as you can see, basically we've got a couple of bugs here happening. Number one, this Geomancer just gets stuck with all of his HP destroyed. He has just one HP for the rest of the fight. You cannot fix it. You cannot heal it, nothing. As you can see, he half the time, this also makes him immune to death. He just won't die when he's hit. He will sometimes die. But a good chunk of the time, he literally gets hit by the boss and he doesn't die. He's invincible, which is hilarious. <laughs> like, you'll see, he will die sometimes and pop up a revive on death. Uh, but half the time, he's just going to survive. The other part of this bug that makes it work is that the boss, you see, he, di he did die that time. We'll have to revive him. Uh, the boss is just going to spam his A1. That's the other part of this. For whatever reason, he's just never going to cleanse. He's never going to heal. He's going to spam his A1. Now, even if they fix these bugs, I think this team will still work. As you can see, it is very, very stable. It would just slow it down a lot because that cleanse is going to really reduce Geomancer's damage, obviously enough. Uh, but that's essentially how it works, right? We just keep sleeping the boss, which pushes this move back. He just spams his A1. Because of Elva, we don't get these debuffs. Excuse me. Uh, and Geomancer puts the burn on and the burn and the reflect damage and the Geomancer max HP passive damage as well. All that stuff is just going to eventually, slowly, kill the boss. He will die. Um, 
Brimstone doesn't actually help this. We do have Brimstone on some of these champions. It doesn't actually help because he never uses an active ability, hilariously. Uh, <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Uh, and again, the thing I also really like about this is that I have not changed my builds. That is one of the biggest things, guys. I've not changed my builds. Mother Cybel. I did change, actually, I'll lie. I changed her build slightly, but it's still effectively the same. She is in a Hydra build. I just made it slightly better because she needs to be fast enough to go before the boss so she can put Revive on Death. Uh, you could bring in other Revive on Death champions, by the way. It, I don't think it really matters because she only needs to do it the once and then she's just there for fun. You could use Elva Speed Aura instead. But she's in Hydra build. Elva is in my Arena slash Hydra build. Godseeker is in my Iron Twins slash Hydra build. And Geomancer is in Iron Twins build, right? Muckstalker was built specifically for this dungeon, but the rest of these champions work absolutely fine with their typical sort of end game builds, right? That you would be using on them anyway for the rest of these dungeons. So that is what makes this so good. You don't really need to change anyone. Like I said, the only change I actually had to make was to put, um, yeah, was to make her slightly faster. You'll also notice here that we do have Warmaster on a lot of the, we've got Warmaster on both, uh, uh, Mother Cybelle and Godseeker, uh, which is bad, right? That's making it less consistent because when they attack, they can knock two pips off of the sleep timer. We might, yeah, like right there, Warmaster procs knocks two pips off. That is bad because it makes the Geomancer burn less consistent. So that slows the run down slightly. But again, that is something I see as an advantage. The run is still reasonably quick, but you still get to take the advantage of having Warmaster in those other pieces of content, especially for Mother Cybelle. She really does want Warmaster. You can see it's really not good here, but hey, it does the job. And there you go. Four minutes. It can be faster. If you didn't have Warmaster, it would be faster. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cheeky, right? A cheeky way to do it. Uh, in terms of the setup for what we have going on with this team, right, what we have, Mother Cybelle uh, for stage 24, which we're on. Uh, 246 speed is actually bonus. You basically factor him in her speed aura. Uh, and you just need her to end up faster than the boss so that she comes in, puts out revive on death. I have her just keep on doing it as well because, well, you might as well effectively, right? The less hits that she does, the better. It's going to wake up the boss less. So it's very, very simple. You can use her. And I do think that she is replaceable with other revive on death champions. If you use Elva speed aura, it's just going to have to make your champions a bit faster. Elva, she is in my arena slash Hydra build. It's about 250 speed. This resistance is totally unnecessary, for example. So you could have her with probably worse defensive stats. She's in no danger of dying. And you could have her, I, I would try to get her around this speed. You want her to be reasonably quick. And she is in there for this move. You just keep pumping that out and pump out some healing. Geomancer, I have him actually fast. Again, he doesn't need to be insanely fast, but somewhere around 250 or so is what I would aim for. And you want him to be approximately 500 accuracy. I'm a little bit low on the accuracy, but his masteries are pushing him over. I think 505 specifically is what you want for stage 24. And he just does the burn, which does all the damage. Godseeker for me is 258. And again, <laughs> You're really flexible here. This is my God Seeker I use on stage 15 Iron Twins and for Hydra. She comes in. I've used her Nightmare Hydra. She comes in. She does this fight as well. Just incredible. And then Muck Stalker. The key with Muck Stalker is to have his accuracy high. I have him over 505 accuracy because I don't have any masteries on him. I've none. And you just leave him to do his stuff by default. He, for whatever reason, has a super smart AI where he won't waste his sleep if the target's already asleep. It's incredible. I think he was in the game when they first released it and they, they released champions with, who can't use their moves properly. And this guy is like super smart. It's really cool. So there you go, that is the setup. Um, and yeah, again, the key is to have your champions be a good speed. Like the boss is about, what? I think he's 265 speed. So the boss is very, very quick. You don't want to be falling behind him too much. You want to be keeping close to that. But you just, main thing is to have your uh, revive on death person be the fastest. So that's the team. I think it's difficult to replace lots of champions. Like Geomancer is key because of his bugs. Uh, I guess you could probably replace Godseeker. She's just in there for healing and keeping uh, Nature's Path consistent. Nature's Path is good. You could probably bring in like, uh, you could probably bring in, what's her name? Um, Skytut Shaman or other Revive on Death champions would probably work. 
Um, you just need to make sure that they're not going to... I don't think they'll heal Geomancer. I think it's bugged, but it's just something to be aware of. So that is team one. And I think it's a pretty it's a pretty nice team. This is the team, my favorite one of these, and it's the one I'm actually using. All right, then for team two, there's a lot to say about this team as well. We are going back down the stages for this one, but check this out. Two champions, stage 15, and go. Um, this team was uh, invented by... Uh, <laughs> there we go. Blog, the Ray Chat of Legends blog by Cosmos. This is where I first saw it. And there's lots of different things you can do, right? We're not bringing in sleep, right? You can use Royal Guard. You can use Ninja. You can use Turvold. Basically, anyone who's going to do good boss damage. And then you're going to bring them in with a healer reviver to keep them alive. And the concept, uh, this was the one... I don't feel too bad myself personally about not understanding, not coming up with a Geomancer strap myself because it's so buggy. This one, I'm like, ah, oh, I should have thought of that. I should have thought of that. But the way this one works, as you can see, part of sort of the, the key here is that with a sleep counter, okay? Right, with this sleep counter, um, by bringing in fewer champions, it just gives your actual really good damage dealer time to just beat on the boss and actually get some good damage across. And then we just need one champion in there to carry them through and to keep them alive. In this case, Elva is perfect because she protects from all these debuffs. She brings a revive if Ninja dies. She puts out good healing. The increased speed is nice. And it's really that simple. You can see my, my Ninja is built somewhat tanky. He's actually surviving. I actually do have him in Lifesteal set as well. So you can see that they're actually healing themselves up to full, like no problem. So this decreased max HP never becomes an issue. Uh, we do have Brimstone, I think on both champions as well, which here it didn't actually do anything, but it can potentially speed the run up this time, right? The boss will sleep himself with a big hit. You can get Brimstone on and it's gonna like trigger on his uh, cleanse move. Uh, so yeah, the key of this, we've got no sleep. We just don't care. Like this brimstone is going to do a good bit of damage. We just don't care. Uh, the key is that your reviver needs to be tanky enough to survive this big nuke. That is the key, right? It ignores 100% uh, defense. So you just want lots and lots of HP on your reviver. You need a good amount of healing. And I think the fun thing about this as well is that you can totally, um, you can switch it up, right? It can be almost any damage dealer. Like if you want to mention a couple already, I think Royal Guard is pretty budget. You could probably bring in Armager, <laughs> really budget. Uh, you could bring in Whisper, I think another good budget option. I think Sill of the Drakes as your damage could work. I just be a little bit careful. The danger with Sill is just to be sure that, because she puts out ally protection when she revives, uh, you need to make sure that she doesn't, you don't get smacked by the, the cleansing AOE, right? Where the boss cleanses himself. You have to make sure that doesn't hit you while she's got ally protection on or she might die. You might need to bring in Syl and another revi uh, another healer, right? Someone like a Hackhorn Smash Lord, for example, be really good. Basically someone that is going to um, put out good healing and, and maybe block debuffs to keep the debuffs off. That would be good as well. Maybe it's a Mytha could be a really good option. So the stats I have here, Elva, 62k HP, 3.5k defense. The defense is not as important, but the HP definitely is. And again, good speed at 250, and that's about it. The rest of the stuff doesn't matter. And then Ninja comes in. He's at decent speed as well, 234. He's got some accuracy. Uh, and uh, yeah, he is in a lifesteal set, which is going to keep him alive. Um, Elva is in stone skin, but that, that doesn't actually matter um, because you're going to be hit by the boss's massive attack constantly throughout the fight it's the only way to really do damage when he goes asleep and then ninja can place his burns you can place brimstone that is when it really takes off uh so you need you need your champ to be tanky enough to survive that right um but yeah look there you go that is uh this one and uh i think this is a great one right because you can farm basically i think up to stage 15 pretty easily i think after stage 15 the boss aoe the big aoe starts to really hit hard so i think it becomes a lot more difficult I do think, though, that getting up into stage 17 should certainly be possible, and you could start getting these bigger pots then as well. I think that is something that you can do uh, as we actually, if you go in and you actually awaken your gear up to level four with these medium pots farming stage 15, I think you can probably get there. And if you start including some other champions, like maybe uh, an ally protection champion, so your reviver makes it through, the big nuke, stuff like that might work as well. It's something definitely to come back to. But I think it's the core of a really good team, just going in with as few champions as possible, which is quite, quite cheap. You could even put in food champions, have them die, and use masteries to boost you up. Pretty cool team.
And then for the final team of the day, guys, this is, by the way, my least favorite one, but it's it's a really interesting concept. This is more of a team concept, uh, but it's I think this is very hard to actually make this work right now. But basically what this is, it's an unkillable team uh, for stage 25. Also works on stage 24 as well, which is really, really impressive. And the concept for this team initially came from Reddit from a user called Vrakow. This is actually four days ago. So this guy came up with this team super fast. I think it's really impressive. He did it on stage 24 in 11 minutes with an Eleanoral. So I was actually trying on stage 25 uh, with Varl. Uh, and basically, hang on, let me, let me get up the video. Okay, guys, so here we go. Let's hit play. Basically how this works, this is pretty crazy. So we actually use a, an unbooked Light Sworn, right, to, to revive on death on turn one. He does a triple hit, puts us down to two. We get the heal out from Painkeeper, which puts us down to one. And then our DPS hits the boss and that wakes him up. And then we come through and because we've got two man eaters and Painkeeper, uh, we basically keep block debuffs up all the time. We keep unkillable up all the time. So we simply cannot die. And because we have a five turn cooldown on an unbooked light sworn, it is all speed tuned in so that when the boss comes back to his big nuke, revive on death will be back on in time, which is just crazy. So here we go. Again, we're unkillable. He can't hurt us. Next time he attacks, he's going to do the, uh, the, the massive nuke. And there we go. Revive on death is back on. So it works. Uh, so this is very fun. Let's just watch it one more time through so you can see the rotation here. You can see the problem is actually doing damage is the problem. But here we go again. Revive on death saves us. We get the triple hit from him. We get the A2 from Painkeeper. And then we get a smack from Varl. Now, how do we actually kill the boss? Well, basically how you kill the boss, the secret to doing this is, drum roll, Brimstone. Let me see if I can skip on a little bit. You have to land Brimstone to actually do damage. So let's see. What, oh, yeah. You see that big chunk out of his health bar right there? Here we go. So watch this. You need Brimstone. So you need a legendary damage dealer with Brimstone. In fact, let me rephrase that. You don't need a legendary damage dealer. You need a legendary with as many points in Brimstone as possible so that they can place Brimstone as often as possible. Here you go. The cleanse comes in. And look at that big chunk. Literally all of your damage comes from Brimstone. So you need Brimstone to hit him a whole bunch of times. It's going to be a very slow run. And unfortunately, you need your champion to be pretty highly awakened for this to be consistent, right? I only have one star on Varl, and you can see how long it's taking. Like, it's just taking an age. We're getting him down slowly, but I basically got 18 minutes in, and I said, you know what? <laughs> There's no point. You can see, we are going to kill him eventually. Varl even decreases his max HP. He, he will die eventually, but it's going to take like an hour uh, with this. So... That is something of a problem. Uh, again, I think that uh, the the team, the sample team here used Eleanoral. I think that's actually a really good pick because she is HP burn, right? So you get HP burn, which does a good chunk of extra damage um, and then Brimstone. So I think once you've got a three star Brimstone, it's going to get actually a pretty reasonable time. Um, and yeah, you can possibly use other stuff. I actually saw, for example, that I think Ash uh, has a video where he used a sky touch shaman but she needs to be partially booked i just don't have that on the test server so i couldn't actually test it out but possibly sky touch shaman could work as your reviver partially booked um in immunity set it's going to be pretty intensive to get her fast enough but that could work um and then i think he used nethril actually as a like a poisoner which again you can get away with because you're going to not get the triple hit from Sky Touch. She's only going to do a single hit. So a champion like Nethril can come in and actually be okay putting out poisons. I think he had a three star awaken Nethril or something like that. But I think that is the key. You need a legendary that has, I would say, at least three stars awakening with Brimstone. And then in terms of the team setup, guys, in terms of the setup, and I've been trying other stuff here too. So Painkeeper, the speeds for this are very particular. Let me actually point this out as... This was an issue I had. I thought this post was great, but it did leave a few things out, unfortunately. So the idea here is that, so he says it is a proof of concept team, which is exactly the point. It takes forever. Uh, higher level brimstone. So it works on 24 and 25 uh, with the same speeds. So this is where it wasn't quite right. Speeds are regular bat eater. Now that's actually not true, right? So um, there's actually quite a wide range of speeds with regular bat eater. I actually do use a regular bat eater. 
well, I actually don't use quite the regular bat eater. I use the Gintoro version. Um, I lowered my speeds to actually fit in regular bat eater and this team didn't work. So I had to lower them even more. So that's something to watch out for. The idea that you could use your bat eater and this will work is not quite true. So specifically the speeds that you need, uh, pain keeper, I believe can be between 240 and 244. Your, your damage dealer should be about 241 to 242. Basically, your damage dealer wants to be similar speed to Pain Keeper, preferably probably slightly slower, but faster than your slower Man Eater. 272 on Light Sworn, 240 on your slow Man Eater, and 268 or so on your fast Man Eater. Um, this might change as well. You might want him slightly slower against stage 24 or against stage 24. Have him open with pummel because he's actually going to outspeed stage 24. So for stage 24, have him open with pummel, I think. And it would still work just fine. He basically need to put this. This guy needs to put out unkillable uh, first turn after you wake up from revive on death. Then man eater two will open with his A1 and then heal unkillable right after that. And that is how it works. Um, but these speeds are quite specific. Uh, if you have them faster and stuff, it's not going to work. Now, the other issue with this comp, the main problem I have is this idea that it is, he's not, it's not deceptive in a sense. Well, it's, it's a bit deceptive, not from the OP here, but just in terms of what you, you might be hoping with this is going, hey, cool, I can just reuse my Bat Eater team. Now, that is not true, guys. It's not true. Bear with me one sec. Okay, and we're back, <laughs> we're back, we're back. Problem is I have to be really careful with the test server because there's some new stuff under embargo that I cannot show. Um, but basically the problem here, guys, is masteries, okay? So for the masteries, normally with a bat eater, you want to be running War Master. Of course you do. War Master gives you a ton of damage. You cannot run War Master on any of these champions. It counts as an extra hit and it's going to wake the boss up too quickly. If the boss wakes up too quickly quickly guess what you you can maybe you could run war master on the man eaters actually maybe um but you you, you can't run it on pain keeper can't have war master she's gonna wake the boss up too quick you can't have war master or giant slayer on light sworn my pain keeper actually was running with phantom touch because it gives a lot of a lot of damage in bat eater that's up to a ton of damage you can't run phantom touch it counts as an extra hit so you can see that it's really tuned in like the our damage dealer their hit is the one that wakes the boss up so if you've got phantom touch or if you've got um war master on pain keeper you're messed up i do think you could you could probably actually run it on the the man eaters i do actually think that's probably probably fine i took it off to be safe and it would actually speed your run up so actually yeah because i don't think they hit the boss before your damage dealer does so you'd be okay um and you could possibly run more master on your damage dealer too You'd have to check it and see how it interacts with uh, with Brimstone, etc. I think you might be okay, but that's just something to be aware of. So that will slow it down. So really, uh, like Phantom Touch can be a big issue. War Master can be a big issue. That stuff will slow you down. And you have to be very specific with the speeds as well. Um, I have instincts set on Vara. Look, you could probably get see from the video I showed you that the damage, the actual damage Varl was doing was basically entirely negligible. Uh, you, you simply want someone with either, you want someone with single hits, they just do a single hit, and you want them to either place poison or you want them to place HP burn, basically is what you want, that's it. And then you want them to have Brimstone and that's where your damage comes from. So yeah, it's pretty cool, right? An unkillable team with Brimstone. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really interesting, like the OP said there, proof of concept. I think it's it's pretty cool for that. The idea that you could use an unkillable team, but yeah, like I said, you're going to mess up Painkeeper. Like, I'm not quite sure, honestly, how he made it work with Phantom Touch on Painkeeper. Uh, from my testing, that really messed it up and slowed it down a ton. Uh, so I think if you remove that, it would probably go a lot faster. I think Ellen Arl is the way to go. The reason I do have Ellen Arl, but I wasn't able to use her because... Uh, I don't have Brimstone on her, which is where the damage comes from. But yeah, I think if you get LNR with Brimstone, you take War Master and Phantom Touch off Pain Keeper, it's actually going to be a pretty good team and it's pretty easy to build. Possibly with Sky Touch Shaman, you could do some other stuff. Like I said, I think Ash used Nethril. Um, ah, I can't really show you the index here. It's too risky on the, <laughs> on the test server. But hey, there you are. What do you guys think? So three different teams. Three different teams. We had our Geomancer team. We had our Duo team. Uh, for state we had geomancer for stage 24 we had our duo team for stage 15 and then the unkillable team with brimstone for stage 24 25 which one are you going to use for me it's pretty clear 
I am going to be using the Geomancer bug team because it's the most effective until they fix that bug. And then I'm going to switch it out. But until they fix the bug, I'm using that first team, no problem. After that, I'm going to use the second team uh, until I get like a, a proper damage dealer that could carry this. This one is really awkward for me to build because I actually do use a Bat Eater team. So I'd have to redo my Clan Boss team. As, I, as you saw, I've got a Demitha, I've got Turvold and stuff. Like I could do it. It's just a bit of a pain in the bum. Uh, so I don't know if I bother. But um, yeah, this is certainly one to look at in the future, I think. And it might be your only option. So it's a good option. But I do think a duo, if you've got Elva especially, is really strong for the lower tier or a trio for the lower levels and just farm up the, the lower and medium pots quickly without wasting too much time. Um, or yeah, do stage 24 if you can do it in like three to five minutes with Geomancer. Guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you saw some interesting teams there and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.